Hello, this is Karen Richardson, the Executive Director of the Virginia Society for Technology and Education. As one of the founding members of the Brainstorm Conference, I'm excited to be part of this new version with new partners and the theme, Limitless Learning. My presentation today is gonna to guide you in navigating and using open education resources available through Virginia's Go Open VA repository. I am gonna take a different approach today from the typical click through tutorial kind of thing. There's lots of them out there. They're very well done. So if you wanna learn the technical aspects of doing what I'm doing today, you can certainly use those um, tutorials to search and learn how to search and share. But I really wanna to focus today on the why question. Why shouldn't I just go to Google? Why shouldn't I just go to another education site rather than this repository? And I think the, the focus of here today is to help answer that question. I think one of the most powerful pieces of open education resources is that ability to remix them and remix them easily. So you can take something, you can change it, and, and then reshare it out. And that I think that's what educators do really, really well, is that taking, changing, and then sharing again. We'll also have some ideas of things your students can do with OER resources. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm Witchy Richie. Actually, if you want to follow me on the internet, I'm Witchy Richie. Uh, the slides will be available to you, so all the links that I'm that I'm clicking on through Go Open VA will be available. And then, of course, the Go Open VA website um, is simply goopenva.org. Let's do a quick review, though. Um, OER, Open Education Resources, refers to free digital materials that can be used or modified by others. And that's the really important part. For teachers, that means that this video or lesson plan you found on the internet can be adjusted to meet your students' needs or aligned with our standards of learning. Virginia has been a leader in this area, and the Go Open VA portal that had been in the planning and preparation stage for several years opened to the public in January 2020. This website encourages Virginia educators and learners to create, share, and use digital resources with the end goals of providing equitable access to learning materials and supporting new approaches to learning and teaching. If you are a K-12 educator in Virginia, you qualify for that free account and you can use the contact information on the website to learn how to set that up. What makes OER work or open education resources work is the way that they're licensed. I'm not going to do a big lecture on copyright here. There's plenty of presentations out there. Um, I've put one together um, for the website, as you'll see. But the important piece of this is that traditional copyright is very restrictive. And, and while you may be able to use something in terms of showing an image to your class, you're not going to be able to take that image and make changes to it or take that textbook and make changes to it. It's very restrictive. The creator owns all the rights and they must grant them to you after you've asked permission. Educators do have a little bit of wiggle room through fair use, but again, it can be messy and confusing. On the other end of the continuum are public domain resources. These have no restrictions at all. They are either old, anything created prior to 1924, or they might be government produced materials. They're all available to use with no restrictions at all. And if you, when you get a copy of the slides, if you click on that resource button there, it takes you out to a list of all the things that became available um, that were created in 1924. But we needed something else. So in between is what's known as Creative Commons. And this is fairly new, maybe 10, 15 years old. This licensing allows creators to make modifications to the traditional copyright to let users know exactly what they may or may not do with their materials. Truly open materials allow users to not only access and use, but remix and republish. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today. So let's go ahead out to the website. I'm going to escape out of my slides here and we'll head out to the website. I will go ahead and show you the slide of the 10 ideas that we're going to be talking about um, for using Go Open VA. And again, these are all linked here. So when the presentation is over, you can come back to the slide and see those links that I shared with you. 
So welcome to Go Open VA. Again, I am logged in. Everything I'm doing today does require um, an account. But let's see some of the things that you can do. So in a very timely manner, uh, the uh, Virginia decided that one way that they could use Go Open VA would be to encourage school divisions to share their various school closing plans. So they've put together what are called curated collections. So these are resources all related to a topic. In this case, the featured topics are um, instructional resources that school divisions have been putting together, extended closing resources for administrators, as well as information about professional learning for teachers. And if we click on that one, you'll see how things are shared. So if we scroll down here, we'll see that this digital learning strategies for e-learning can be remixed and shared. Some resources tell you that you can do anything you want with them as well, um, and you'll be able to, to remix and, and reuse them. So the nice thing about these are that other school school divisions can see what other school divisions are using and then be able to remix those items to create their own plans. Another way that we can help, another way that the uh, materials on the site can help is sharing lesson plans. Teachers do a lot of this, and so uh, that's a great way for teachers to use this. So here's a lesson plan I found. It's actually really an instructional strategy called Honeycomb Harvest. Um, and, and the nice thing about these plans is you can really tinker with them. So the teacher who shared this resource, and you can see her name's down here, uh, her Creative Commons license is there, but it's a really an instructional strategy. And when we view the resource, we'll see that she put it together specifically for novels that she teaches in her classroom. So the rationale is there. And then when we go and click on the sample activity, we'll see that she talks about how she used this activity with Frankenstein or the picture of Dorian Gray, two novels that she's teaching. Well, I may not teach those particular novels, but I may want to go ahead and use the setup that she has put together. So I simply click the remix this resource button. It goes ahead and opens a copy of it for me in my account, and then I'm able to make edits to it if I would like to. So for instance, if for the sample activity, I don't want to do Dorian Gray, I might teach Romeo and Juliet. So I can change Dorian Gray to Romeo and Juliet and just do a quick edit there. And then I'm going to have to decide what items I'm going to include on my honeycomb card, which characters and then which themes am I going to include? Once I'm done with that, I can go ahead and save it out. Um, once it's reviewed, it can be published. And now I've been able to add to that particular lesson plan and extend its use for other teachers. One simple way you can contribute to the Go Open repository is by adding. Um, standards to various resources. So for instance, the inner illust illustrative mathematics websites has lots of good resources, but most of them are not aligned to Virginia. So I've been working on aligning some of those. So you can see I added in one alignment here, but it's very easy to do. I just click the align button. It opens up this screen for me. And then all the Virginia standards show up. So I can go down here to mathematics because this is a mathematics plan. Now I put in grade one, but I bet this lesson plan could also work for grade two. So I choose grade two. This is about measurement and geometry. And then I look down through the actual standards. And in this case, once we get to second grade, we're actually using standard measurements. My standard shows up. I click Add Selected Tag. And now I've added two standards. There's lots of resources in Go Open that could benefit from people going in and aligning them to the Virginia standards. That's a great way to remix them so they're more useful for all of us. There are open textbooks available. 
as well. And in fact, that was one of the early uses of OER was to pull together lots of open resources to create a free textbook for people. They may like this one be hosted on another site. So I found it through Go Open, but it's actually hosted here, you'll see, at Wikibooks. Remixing this isn't really an option unless I decided to do it on the Wikibooks website. But when I scroll down to the bottom of the page, I see that the text is available via a Creative Commons license. That means that I can take any of the text in here, copy and paste it into my own new book. I know, we tell kids they're not supposed to do that. But in this case, that's one of the beauties of OER. I may only want one of the chapters. Maybe I'm only interested in the multimedia and virtual resources. And I want to take that text and edit it and make it uh, easier for folks to get to. Or I want to turn it into an infographic or, or any of those sorts of items. I can grab that text and then I can paste it in to the authoring tool at Go Open VA. Many of the resources that are shared are just that. They're standalone resources. So FET is a, a from University of Colorado. Boulder provides lots of interactive simulations that you can use. They do have their own lesson plans on the site, but they may or may not be open the way that Go Open VA sites are. So what you can do is use the authoring tool to build a lesson plan around that particular item. So for instance, I took it and began to put together a lesson plan for teachers or a lesson plan for teachers that then they can share with their students. So it tells you exactly what to do. It tells the students what to do. It gives them some ideas about things to do at the website. And then it links out to that particular resource. You'll notice that there's a student view. When I go in to edit it, I can also, here's what I added. I've added my resources to it. I could attach a Google Doc if I wanted, um, but then I can also add instructor notes to it. So I can say to a teacher, here's how I did this. You might wanna play this up and so on and so forth. So essentially I'm taking a resource and I'm building a, a Virginia aligned lesson plan around that particular resource. One of the ways that resources and materials are shared is through content providers. So one of the content providers is the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts, and it has a new collection that includes African-American artists linked to historical documents and literary works. So this has been shared on the site. And it comes from the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. Um, and you'll notice it's already aligned to Virginia. All the good stuff has happened. But when I scroll down, there's a comment from one of the teachers that says, this is a good selection of resources, but the teacher has to do a lot of heavy lifting to figure out how to use these resources. So one of the things that you can do is, as it says right here, you can remix these resources. So I can open this up in my own uh, authoring tool. And then I might add in ideas for using this particular item. So it drops in the whole resource to me. And originally, this did have a few ideas listed down here for classroom use. But I could edit those and particularly potentially add to them as well. But I can also create an actual unit around them and create, instead of just having the idea, I could actually create a lesson plan around that idea. So maybe I want to use it as a conversation starter, as, as the creator here, I could go in and put in those very specific lesson plan ideas and then save the teachers from doing all the heavy lifting. Again, this is why remixing can be really useful to you.
One of the other providers for Go Open VA is actually one of my favorite resources on the web called the Digital Public Library of America, or DPLA. And they've put together a variety of exhibitions around topics. So for instance, this one focuses on um, women aviators. You'll notice this one doesn't have any kind of remix button with it. Again, here's one that hasn't been aligned yet. That'd be a great way to help. But when I go out and look at the resource, I notice it's got lots of photographs with it. It's got some text about it. Um, and any of these could then be used as the basis for a new particular assignment. So for instance, um, if we want to look down, I, I just love some of these pictures that are here, these women aviators. We might tell some stories about them. Um, this photograph, even though it says it has a copyright on it, it also has a creative commons. You could use this photograph as the start of a story story about Harriet Quimby, or perhaps um, other ideas about doing some research into these women, or writing a short story about what it was like to be one of these women. So you can use this site as a starter for larger ideas. But again, I could save this site into my particular items and then create a plan around it. How would a teacher use this website with their students? Another way we use the web a lot is to look for images. Um, and I created a guide to finding these openly licensed resources. So this is one I created from scratch. I opened it up in the authoring tool and I started putting in my materials. And if we go and look at the resource you'll, itself, you'll see. So again, a little bit about copyright, how to find public domain materials, um, how to how Creative Commons fits in, and then how to find Creative Commons materials. And when you click on each of these, they'll take you to that particular section of the site. It's got that remix button right there. So guess what? If you have additional resources that you want to include, you could certainly go ahead and remix this and add your own resources as well. Feel free. Now for our last two ideas. So I've got all these resources. I know I can make lesson plans on them. What about all those images though? What can we do with images besides just decorating slides with them? So I have two ideas for you to end up here today. A couple of years ago, 2018, for some reason in March, I decided every day I was going to make a postcard a, a day. And that was going to combine open resources along with text. Guess what they're called now? Memes in many cases. Although you'll see mine are more um, honest to goodness postcards. But here are just a couple samples of things that I did. So here's one where I took a couple of public domain images, ones of birds, here's one of Emily Dickinson, and then I combined them together with one of Emily Dickinson's poems. Again, she wrote these a long time ago. The poem itself is in the public domain as well. And I've actually sent this po postcard to quite a few people. Um, I really like it. Here's one where I took one of my own pictures and then I added a doodle on top of it to create a photo. Here's another one with poetry. I found this image called the Seven of Pentacles and then I included Marge Pierce, part of Marge Piercy's poem on it. This one I just thought was fun. It's a play on the fourth and fourth from the Digital Public Library of America. It's an image of a calendar for March. This is a fun one with flying to the moon. I added in the airplane there and so on and so forth. So lots of opportunities for taking copyright friendly images, adding some text to them. During March, I did one for St. Patrick's Day. I celebrated several other holidays. Of course, it was Women's History Month, so that was why a lot of them focused on women as well. And then my final 
idea for day actually came uh, from Tom Woodward, who's currently at Virginia Commonwealth University. Um, and this was an idea for making historical selfies. Basically, you take an image of a person mostly, but it could be a place, and you turn it into an instant message, Instagram style of post. So we had this idea, we had created a few of them, and I went ahead and used Go Open VA as the place to actually create the lesson plan. Again, I started this from scratch. I used the open author tool that's part of the website, and I was able to put in the lesson plan itself. So I've got learning goals. I've aligned it um, to Virginia's studies. Uh, I've given you some ideas. And then here's the sample that I made of um, Scott making it to the South Pole and realizing that they were not the first people to, to appear there. So lots of great ideas. Um, I used two different images here, one of the 10 and then one of Scott. I added in the hashtags. And in and it's kind of a story onto itself. And I think it's something that... Um, that I think students would really appreciate doing. You, of course, can grab my lesson plan. It's got that remix button there. Maybe you don't want them to create a selfie. You want them to create a website for someone or a Facebook account for an historical event. How would something like the American Revolution be covered now if there were bloggers and Instagrammers and, and, and those sorts of things? So you could take that simple idea of the historical selfie and remix it um, with other ideas as well. So 10 ways of interacting with the Go Open VA repository. I'm hoping it will help you, other teachers, and your students to use the open education resources. So just as a reminder, you can find the slides at Go Open VA Ideas from Bitly, and the Go Open VA website is goopenva.org. I hope I've got some creative juices flowing and that you'll take some time to explore Go Open VA.